One of the largest engineering uses of quantum mechanics is in understanding what happens in crystalline materials, especially the materials we call semiconductors. Semiconductors are the materials we use to make most of our modern electronic devices, such as transistors. Crystals are materials made from the regular repetition of what we call unit cells, which we can think of as little bricks, at least in a mathematical sense. Crystalline materials are quite common in nature. Many minerals are crystal. For example, gemstones, such as diamonds, are actually crystals. Because of their very ordered nature, crystals can turn out to have properties that we can understand relatively easily and quite exactly, and that consequently are quite predictable and controllable. That predictability and controllability is one of the reasons that most of our electronics and essentially all of our very complicated electronics, in integrated circuit chips, for example, are made from crystalline semiconductor materials. For electronic devices, most commonly we use the crystalline semiconductor silicon, though other crystalline semiconductor materials, such as gallium arsenide, gallium nitride, and germanium, are also used. Crystalline semiconductors are also used for many optoelectronic devices. Light-emitting diodes and semiconductor lasers are examples of the devices that turn electrical current into light. Other semiconductor optoelectronic devices detect light and turn it into electrical signals or currents, such as the photodetectors in your digital cameras or in optical telecommunications over optical fiber and many of the solar cells that convert sunlight to electrical power. Other semiconductor optoelectronic devices are used to modulate light, that is, to turn it on and off in telecommunications. Fortunately, at least in some very useful approximate models, the quantum mechanics of these crystalline materials is relatively easy to understand. Here we're going to introduce the core of the quantum mechanics of crystalline materials. We will not, of course, discuss all of the detailed physics of semiconductors, that is a subject that can take up several courses of material. Our goal is to explain the ideas of quantum mechanics in these materials. That will give the basis for understanding the quantum mechanics of what is sometimes called solid state physics, the physics of solid materials, and all of the many devices that follow from this. We'll start here by summarizing the idea of crystals, the regular arrays of atoms that show all of these interesting and useful properties.